I want you to imagine you're in a zombie apocalypse and everyone is fighting for their life. The world is coming to a near end. You're injured and you've lost two of your sights. So you're blindfolded. You have five seconds to choose your choice of weaponry until zombies come and eat your brains out. So which one are you going to choose? The sniper or the machine gun? Because you're blindfolded, right? You choose the machine gun because the urgency and the state of your life depends on it. I'd pick up the machine gun and start firing away, going crazy. Like, doo, 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 doo. My life depends on it. There's urgency there. Picking up a machine gun is like starting something new in life. A new hobby, a new business, a new whatever venture you have. You literally just got to pick it up and start firing to see what hits, to see what works. And when we get to the stage where we can see the vision and see what's going on, our eyes have healed, we can pick and have more freedom in our choices. But when you're starting out, you don't have this luxury of seeing because you don't have any experiences, you don't know anything, you're naive, you simply just lack knowledge and you just started so you don't know anything. But does that mean you're not going to pick up the gun and start firing? Die from not making a decision and the zombies come and eat your brains out? You're not, right? Because you have urgency. It's the same thing as not starting the business that you always said you wanted to do. Not going to the gym and working out. Not reading books and gaining knowledge. At the time when we lack knowledge, we don't understand, we just started, beginning of our career, we don't see the vision, right? That's the most important time to start firing because each fire that you shoot, you're going to get feedback and you're going to understand like, okay, I know where to shoot now because I've hit, right? You're just going to see what bullets hits because you're just shooting and like just do, 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 seeing what hits. And after each round, after each target, after each time you do it, you'll be able to understand for the feedback process of knowing where to direct where you want to go, knowing where to place your hand, knowing the steps because you're, you know, a couple rounds in, you're a couple steps in now. You're able to have this feedback loop. Beginners get so locked up in like, okay, I, I want to choose the best time. I want to choose the best decision. I want to like, okay, I'll plan first and then I'll plan and then I'll, I'll do this first. I haven't made a decision yet. And for the more experienced people that go into it, they don't know when to switch. They don't know when to make the next step in their career. They don't know when to push, you know, whatever they're doing forward, P pushing their business forward, pushing their self forward. They don't know when to make that switch or they procrastinate over it. The solution is understanding that when you're at the first stage of your career, you need to just start firing because you don't know enough to be choosing that sniper because you don't know how to work it. You don't know what direction to put it. You're blindfolded. But as you keep getting better into whatever you're doing, your blindfolds start coming off and you see the vision. And when you see that vision, you're able to make calculated decisions. So why would a beginner make calculated decisions when they have lack no knowledge? It doesn't make sense, right? If you're at the beginning of your career, you need to take action now or the zombies are going to come and blow your brains out. <laughs> but there's one flaw in this story, okay? This one flaw like won't motivate you, right? And it's, it sounds boring, but understanding this will get you successful. That one flaw in that story is urgency. You've been living life so comfortably and there's literally no urgency in your life. Just like the story of the sniper and the machine gun, you need to treat your life like tomorrow is not promised. Because tomorrow is not promised. I, I truly don't know if tomorrow, the next day, the next few hours, I'm going to be here or not. We truly don't know. If I ask you a question, do you know if you live tomorrow? You can have certainty. But it's not 100% certainty. So we fully don't know if we're going to live the next day. That's how you should create urgency in your life. 
how long until you've passed away and your friends and family carry on with their lives? How long do you think? You need to start building your legacy now. How long is it until you're going to start putting that commitment in? Putting that action in? Take that first step and put two feet in to start building something. Because time is so crucial that you need to be firing all your bullets. You need to go all in. Even though you have that uncertainty, you have that doubt in your mind, you feel like you can't do it and there's so much risk involved, that's the best time. To think that when you're gonna start when you have that sniper or when it's the best time is, is, is a false reality. You know, there's never going to be a best time. You literally need to go all in now. Have that urgency in your life. Build that urgency. Look, I'm 21 years old. And through this mentality, I've achieved more than the average person in their 30s. How? Urgency. Being comfortable with getting uncomfortable. You know that uncomfortable feeling when you first start something? That uncertainty, that doubt? Perfect time to start. Some of you guys might be like, okay, well, I don't know what to go into. Like, I don't know how to, like, where should I put all this energy? I have so much energy and I want it. I, I really want it. But, like, where do I go? This is what you should do. Look back at what you enjoy, what you like. But I'm not even talking about, like, the surface area. Like, oh, yeah, I like to, uh, you know, talk to my friends and I like to go out and eat. And no, I'm talking about your inner child. I'm talking about who you really are. For example, when I was a kid, I used to really love like stickers. And when I was about third to fourth grade, I had an idea. I made a sticker business. I would grab my iPad, turn on full brightness, get a piece of paper, put it on top. And you know when you can put a piece of paper on top, you can see like the outline of it on the other side. That's why I turned up my brightness. So I got pencil and I carved it. And I colored it in with some textures. And during this time, stickers was a big, really big craze. So I made these stickers, handmade, and I used like this sticky, like double-sided sticky tape clear thing. Like it's like a lamination. And I used that to make like small stickers, medium stickers, big stickers, $3, $4, $5. And I'd go in school and I'd sell them, right? So this story is quite unique to me, but Find your story. Find that one story. Like it only takes one story of like one memory, you know, one memory of your inner child to really understand who you are. Because the reason why I'm like telling you to look deep into your inner child, because that's who you are. That's your purity. When you're young, you are the most pure you've ever been. And as you grow up, people inject these false beliefs into you, these false standards, these limiting factors into your brain. And when you're able to dissect that, you can understand who you truly are by looking at your past and seeing those joyful stories or seeing that one thing that you used to like. Because when you find that thing that you always did, like uh, your hobby, the thing you enjoyed, or you can really like, you know, doing certain things. If you find that, like you can stem that and feel like your thing that you want to go into. Like when I first started my, you know, business journey, my entrepreneurial journey, I realized that like I used to be a guy that does business. You know, in, when I was a kid, like I was selling stickers already. So that was already in my inner child. And then I look at today how like I'm a Muay Thai fighter as well and I have four fights with zero losses. And I look back and I used to do karate. I was like, huh. And then I used to do cross country, right? I used to run far distances. Now I'm into like, you know, reading like David Goggins, reading books, reading um, self-help books. Like I just had to d dive deep enough. So when you dive deep, I, that allowed me to see that that can stem into who you are, you know, stem into your career path. So sit down and find that. So if you don't know what you want to go all in on, go for a walk, go, you know, meditate, go do some visualization, try to see your life and where you would be in three to five years. That's how you can find what to go all in on. And if you already have that 
thing that, that, that you always said you wanted to do, go freaking do it. The perfect time is now because even when you feel uncertain of what you want to do, do it. That's the best time. Even if you say like, okay, maybe I don't have enough time, right? I don't have any time to do it. Like I, I'm working right now. It's easy to say, Hakeem, you, you, you say it's easy to go in. Like, you know, it's all like nice to say, but I have a nine to five job. I have uni, I have college, I have work. I have things that I have, like responsibilities I have. So you're saying that it's really busy for you, right? I completely understand. But if you start when you have free time, you will only continue that activity, continue that task when you have free time. And we all know that life doesn't get like freer. It sounds, in three months, yeah, I'll do it. It sounds like we have more free time, but we don't, we get busier. So if you start when you're at your most busiest time, when you're busy anyways, you're gonna still do it, right? So why would you do it only when you're free? That means that you only continue going to the gym or going, doing that side hustle or doing your business or working on that side project when it's free time. Do you see what I mean here? Maybe you're already into your career. Maybe you're already like, you know, doing what you're, you know you're doing. You will reach a point where what you're doing is like mundane and, and you know, like it doesn't have that spark anymore. And do you know why you don't have that spark anymore? It's because you've stopped growing. You've stopped being creative. You stopped thinking outside the box for it. Something has limited you, either yourself, either your boss, either your environment. Something has limited you to stop you from that spark. Let's just say you're a chef, okay? You start being a chef because you just love creating food, but then you go into like a workplace and you, you know, fulfill your career and you go into culinary school and you get into there and then you have a boss and the boss tells you what to do and then tells you to cook like this, have standards like this, this is how we do things, boom, boom. You've lost that spark now because there's no more limits to climb. Someone, something has put a barrier on you. So what is that barrier for you? Is it your boss? Is it you? Is it your environment, right? You've stopped growing Therefore, you don't have that drive anymore. People ask me all the time, is it boring doing what I do? Is it boring being a barber, being a mentor, being... No. It's not boring because I'm always growing. If I stay to where I'm at, it's so easy to be bored. I, I get very itchy. My butt gets itchy, right? My hands get itchy because I hate staying in the same place. That's why when people ask me, is it boring? It's, barbering seems so boring. Or well, doing this seems so boring for you. Just staying home and just grinding and working seems so boring. It's because I'm always striving for new limits. That's why it gets new heights every time. That's why I see people climb mountain. They climb higher ones. High, you don't go from the biggest mountain to smaller ones. It's because the thrill is there no, no, like no more. You stopped being creative. You, you, Creative isn't even like the word that does it justice. The word is like, you've stopped thinking out the box. You've stopped thinking freely. You let that free, like that limit block you from your potential. That creativity isn't there anymore. You want to know how to win? They say that a creator that always wins never stops experimenting. Because when you experiment, Creativity spontaneously just happens. Creativity just flows. And when creativity flows, the world just stops to admire. It's always a pleasure talking with you guys. And may God place warmth, growth, and true success in your life. I'll um, speak to you soon. And look, also, while I've got you here as well, I can see that you want um, utilities requested. We can definitely do that for you. We can get our sister company to get in touch with you and organise gas and electricity and anything like that for you. Yep, perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. Amazing. All right, well, we'll speak soon and uh, we'll get a commencement date. Okay, sounds good. Perfect. All right, bye for now. Take it easy, Adam. Bye-bye. Let's go. I just got approved for my rental. Um, yeah, that yeah, nó vô. Yeah. 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 Con, con ở nhà, con ở nhà con làm uh, cái. It's crazy. I just got approved. I told my mom that about our house. I applied like all night. 
and um, did the application all night. So we freaking got it, dude. That's what I mean, bro. You guys got to take action, man. I'm telling you, this is your sign to go all in. See that? The I'm trying to give you a sign.